Now, when I talk about goals, I am not talking about what happens in the monthly sales meeting in the agency. When the manager has a big searchlight and he shines the light on you and he says, what's your goal for the month? And we say, oh, eight sales, boss. This isn't a goal, it's a number that'll encourage him to take the spotlight off us and go and disturb somebody else's afternoon. Now, our goals have to be commitments we make to ourselves. And why are goals so important? Let me share with you a story. Uh, I have a granddaughter. I, I know what you're thinking. Surely he's much too young to be a grandfather. <laughs> I have four grandchildren. Now, in my country, at the end of the school year, every school in the country has a sports day where all the kids run races against each other. And when my granddaughter was four years old, I went to her first school sports day. Picture this. Beautiful little girls surrounded by the teacher. Aren't all four-year-old girls beautiful? It's when they get to 14 the problems begin. <laughs> teacher surrounded by beautiful four-year-old girls. 25 meters over here, two older pupils holding a tape across what is obviously the running track. And all the proud mums and dads and grandmas and poppers all in a line waiting to cheer for our own. And the teacher says to the children, when I say go, I want you to run as fast as you can. Are you ready? Are you set? Go! And they scattered in every direction. <laughs> they didn't have a goal. Our goals are our destination. Think of the sat-nav or GPS in your car. What's the first question it asks you? City, street, house number, zip code. It's asking you for the destination. Why? Because only when we know where we want to go can we plan the route. And if we don't know where we want to go, we will probably end up somewhere we might not like to be. We must have a clearly defined destination. Then we can plan the route. What do I want to achieve Achieve with my career? First goal we should all have is a career goal. What am I doing here in this business? How to find a career goal? When you have a quiet moment after this meeting. Quiet moment. Ask yourself this question. When my career in this business is over, and I look back on my time in the life insurance business. What do I want to see that will make me proud? What do I want to see that will make me proud of my years in the life insurance business? And will have a career goal, a purpose for being in this business. And then we can break it down. Where do I need to be at the end of each year? The end of each month? The end of each week? And if we have the courage, the end of each day, which if I repeat it day after day, will bring my goals to reality. Daily goals. The most successful people in this or any other business, when they get up in the morning, they know exactly what it is they want to achieve this day. We need daily goals. They give us a sense of urgency to do today what needs to be done today and not to put it off until tomorrow. Daily goals. The more goals we reach, the easier it becomes to reach more goals. It's what we do each day that determines our success or failure in this business. Failure or success is something we practice on a daily basis. Now, most people won't set daily goals. It's hard. It takes courage. If we only have a goal for the year, we only face failure once a year, don't we? On the 31st of December, if I can just remember where I put the piece of paper with my goal written on, I'll know if I succeeded this year. With a daily goal, we have to go home at the end of every day, face ourselves in the mirror and ask ourselves a question. Did I fail or did I succeed today? It takes courage. I'll give you a guarantee. Those who have the courage to set daily goals will always, always be more successful than those who don't. 
Now, if our vision is in our goals, where will we find our action? Our action is in our activity, the calls we make. Let me ask you a question. Please be honest with me. Please put your hand up, all those who did not make as many calls last month as we should have made. Thank you for being so honest. Uh, let me ask you another question. Um, whose commission check at the end of last month was less than you would have liked it to be? Oh, it's the same hands. Is this a coincidence? Of course not. The gods of selling always smile most kindly on those who make the calls. For us it will always be a case that this week's calls makes next week's commission. Activity. My first day in the life insurance business, I said to my manager, what do I have to do to guarantee I succeed? He said, make 15 appointments a week. I said, what if I only make 14 appointments? He said, with 14 appointments you might succeed. With 15, I guarantee it. I went through my first 25 years in this business before I had the courage to make less than 15 appointments in a week. We need the activity. But how many more appointments do we need to make? Let me share with you a story to show how a tiny little bit of extra effort can make an enormous difference. The greatest Olympic athlete of all time is an Englishman. His name is Stephen Redgrave. The reason he's the greatest Olympic athlete of all time is very simple. He is the only athlete in the history of the Olympic Games to win a gold medal at five consecutive Olympics. Others have more medals, but no other athlete has ever won a gold medal at five consecutive Olympics. Imagine what it takes to be at the top of your chosen field for over 20 years. And after Redgrave won his fifth gold medal, he was interviewed for British television, and the interviewer asked him, what do you think it is that makes you better than the rest? And he replied, I think it's because I train on Christmas Day, and my competitors don't, and it's enough to give me an edge. He isn't saying he works twice as hard. They all train on 364 days of the year. He trains on the 365th, and it's enough to give him an edge. What little extra could we do with our activity that might give us that little edge? What if we were to make just one more appointment each week? Is, is this beyond us? What if we were to make just one more appointment each week? But just picture this. One more appointment each week, that's 50 for the year. We make 50 more appointments for the year 40 of them will be there when we call. 10 of them will buy from us. If 10 of them buy from us, the average commission will be a, about a thousand ringgits for each sale. That's an extra 10,000 ringgits of income from one more appointment each week. Picture this when today is over and you go home and your much beloved, your loved one says to you, well, did you get any good ideas? You can tell them. One of the speakers said, if I make just one more appointment each week, darling, you can have an extra 10,000 ringgits to spend this year. What do you think, darling? And what do you think your darling will say? I know what my darling would say. Make two. <laughs> we succeed for many reasons in this business. We only ever fail for one. Lack of discipline. The difference, the difference be between mediocrity and success, the difference between making MDRT or not, the difference between MDRT and court of the table, between court of the table and top of the table, is all wrapped up in the one word, discipline. The most successful amongst us discipline ourselves to do the things the less successful don't like doing. Now, I'm choosing my words carefully. I am not saying the most successful enjoy doing the things the rest don't like to do. It's just we discipline ourselves to do those things whether we enjoy doing them or not. 
Discipline, discipline, discipline. Our success does not come by closing easy sales. Our success comes when we lose hard-fought ones and have the courage, the discipline to come back and try again. There are no extraordinary people in our business. But there are some ordinary people who discipline themselves to achieve extraordinary results.